Okay, hi ho chaps, and welcome back to another edition of Plastic Models by a Regular Dude. This one pertaining to the Dead in Their Tracks group build on the YouTube Modelers Google Plus page, and my buddy build with Stevie Gibson. Um, the kit, as you hopefully remember, is the... SDKFZ-167 Stu 4 Mid-Production Smart Kit by Dragon. And um, on the last episode, I had left off at Step 6. So I've done Step 7, which is the uh, engine deck. That's all assembled and ready to go. Like usual, I'm building this in, in components, um, sub-assemblies for... Uh, ease of um, painting and also to make sure everything fits together. Um, one of the things I had to do, and I haven't, I've, I can't ever remember having to actually do this with a model before, but uh, I had to um, cut off the front portion of the fenders and glue on a kit supplied part that is different in configuration. That went just fine. And just a quick note for people building these kits, especially if it's your first Dragon kit, you will notice that there are a lot of uh, these type of things. Um, sprue gates, little bits of sprue um, runner, whatever you call it. There's lots of those all over the kits, and it's easy to just start clipping away. Well, on the Stug 4 and on Panzer uh, 4, you know, with the turret, uh, they generally have side skirts, and these little brackets here are what the side skirts mount to. Well, in my zeal to cut off all the little nubs, because there were some sprinkled throughout the kit, um, I almost chopped those off, but fortunately I wasn't over eager and I didn't chop any of them off. So, just a note, watch for stuff like that. So, anyway, I did that. I did the uh, floor plate, got that assembled. Uh, this is all in step eight. Um, all of the fender stuff, as you can see, I haven't done any of that yet other than glue that on. Um, I will do that after I have the majority of the vehicle assembled. Um, then, whoops, ah, knocking stuff over. Okay, then uh, it shows in this part here to glue in the floor plate, glue on the back and the fenders. Well, I'm not doing that until after I assemble the tracks. Now we'll get back to that in a minute. Um, now, one thing I want to do make a note about in stuff like this, and this is different. Um, in Dragon kits compared to, say, you know, some of the other kits like Tamiya or Academy. This floor plate, there is no definite spot where that floor plate goes. It's not like there's pins or um, lineup marks or anything like that. It just shows it dropping in there. And as you can see on the bottom, it's just perfectly flat. It doesn't really show. So that's why I'm not putting this stuff together until I can start test fitting some stuff and make sure it assembles correctly. So, um, anyway, that's that. So, uh, um, actually, I think once I glue this bulkhead in here, that's probably what will allow that floor plate to align. Yeah, I'm sure that's what it is. But anyway, I still need to do that. But I wanted to get some of the sub-assemblies uh, first. Um, so then, uh, then came the main gun. And here it is, and I did not, um, it's a very nice gun, it fits together well, and uh, the detail is really nice, uh, I'm sure you can see there. But I'm sure you can also see that there are seam lines, and um, seams where halves are cemented together. And normally I clean those up and I fix them and I make them look all beautiful. Well, none of this is going to be seen, so... I know some people do it no matter what, and I generally do, but in this case, um, I'm not concerned with what's going on on the inside of the hole. 
Um, even though there's a lot of detail and stuff, but it's it's got hatches on it, and uh, um, I don't plan on having the the interior of the vehicle exposed. So, you know, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let it ride. But very nice gun, and I say that, and I like I normally do. I will probably change my mind, and I'll probably clean it all up and make it look all beautiful. But we shall see. But anyway, nice gun. Got that all assembled. Uh, went together uh, easily enough. Um, this part here. Now, I had mentioned that there are photo etch parts that fit here, um, and that I wasn't going to use those parts, and I did because I didn't think it was necessary, and I thought it would be less frustrating to use these plastic parts in this part here. So that's what I did. Um, but I am not an anti, um, I am not an anti photo etch part person and I will show you, uh, proof of that. I'm going to straighten this part up real quick. Like the nice thing about to me, extra thin is you can, you can straighten this stuff up even after it's dried, just apply a little bit more, it'll soften it up and get it put in place. Um, so anyway, um, let's see. So this right here is a part that I did use the photo etch. Um, it was easy to put together and I think in this case it looks much nicer than the plastic part. The plastic part would have been really kind of chunky looking uh, compared to this. Uh, let me turn on side and let me zoom in a little bit here. See if I can show you a little bit better what it looks like. Okay, as you can see, very fine. It was easy to bend together and to put these uh, C hooks in place. It's got this nice little uh, um, wing nut detail. And I think after, you know, I get it kind of assembled and everything, or installed on the kit, I'm going to twist that wing nut a little bit so it doesn't just look like a piece of, a flat piece of brass. It'll look like a wing nut that's been spun on there. So, nice photo etch. That's where photo etch, in my opinion, is good. Also here, um, this uh, photo etch part goes on the bottom of here. It also, you know, does it really need photo etch? I don't know, but it came with it and it looks decent and it would allow a person to, um, you know, maybe put one of the road wheels in and leave it open and, it's, you know, look kind of neat. I don't know. But I, I think that's the only part. I don't think there's a kit, a plastic part for that. Uh, but wheels go in over top, so it's not really that big a deal. Um, then, so I got all that. Um, haven't done the spare wheels yet. I'll wait till I, you know, start doing some painting, and I'll put those together. Uh, the interior of the hull where the radios are, uh, got that together, uh, which is that's step eleven. Um, so. This is all step 11 here. Got all this put together, and again, and again, there are photo etch parts here, which is this part here. That was very easy to put together. Um, it looks nice. Uh, photo etch here. You know, kind of the hatch stop. Uh, let's see all of these uh, bolt-on armor here. Sorry, guys, forgot to zoom back out. What a goober! Okay, sorry. Um, photo etch there. In case it was off camera, photo etch there. Uh, the bolt-on armor. Um, all of this stuff. This part here. All of this stuff that that assembled on here where the weld seams are. I mean, everything fits together really nicely. So it looks like a weld. There's no there's no gaps. There's no, you know, weirdness going on. I mean, it looks like a weld. It doesn't look like something just tacked on there with a weld bead on the edge. 
So that's kind of nice. Um, you know, you see the interior detail here of the radios, um, the exhaust, ventilation fan. Um, on this side, this is where the spare tracks go. And I think that might be on the next page, so I'll come to that in a minute and tell you why I did it like this. Um, then, after all of that, then we have the... The uh, commander's hatch, that's a very nice piece. The only parts I did not glue into position were the um, periscopes. I like to do those after uh, I paint. So what I'll do in a, in a case like this is I'll I'll put all this together. Well, I'll probably tape this off, tape off the seam there, and then uh, um, I'll paint everything. And before I glue it into place, before I glue this into place, I'll uh, detail paint the periscopes and then install those and that way when I put them on there I don't have to worry about any overspray getting on them and I'll be able to uh, spray the inside there where that brass strip is that makes up the inside ring of the uh, the hatch um, so got that done um, I glued I assembled this uh, machine gun mount here for the uh, for the um, remote, remotely operated uh, machine gun. Uh, I saved the machine gun to later, again, so I can paint that separately from this. And uh, that turned out really nice. The detail's really good on it. And uh, that's gonna look, that's gonna look nice. Um, that goes over here, okay. So, um, I got that. I still have, uh, let's see, I got that cemented on. This little bit of extra armor, again, you know, it fits really nicely all along that contour. And um, it just looks like it's an integral part of the this top plate instead of just looking like something that's stuck on there. So, again, no complaints on the detail on this kit. Okay, so then, back here, that was uh, step 13. Now, here's what I wanted to talk about. As you can see here, um, it is calling for part K22. Sorry, it was right here in front of my face. So, this is part K22, and what it is is... Um, uh, six spare track links in um, two sections of three and then there looks like a, a long bar goes through where the track pins go to hold it in place on the side of the superstructure now this is that same superstructure uh, the mounting point without the tracks now here's why I did not use the tracks Okay, as you know, it's a smart kit, so it comes with magic tracks. Now, the spare track, all the spare tracks on this kit, as you can see here, have solid guide horns. Okay? They're not supposed to be solid guide horns. They are supposed to be like this chunk of magic track here, hollow guide horns. So, if I were to mount those, it would look kind of dumb because, um, you know, hollow guide horn tracks, solid guide horn spare tracks, that dog ain't going to hunt. So the other spare track links are individual pieces, and I'll be able to, like, well, another example. Let me get the, uh, where... The spare track links mount to the front of the vehicle. They have little locating pins. Okay, locating pins go in the holes on the whole front. And then it looks like a pin is passing through there. 
but again it's got these solid guide horns and that just that's just wonky I mean why would they do that and then not only do are these part there's one two three track links with pins to fit in those guide hole those uh, those holes okay then in between you're supposed to use track from the magic link the magic track link sets so you'd have some solid guide horns and hollow guide horns so uh, that would look dumb and you're either the dilemma is do you try and hollow these out it could be done I've done it before but it seems like a lot of work or I could cut these off and cut some off of the extra links and glue them in place which that's feasible or you could just take the uh, magic track links and fabricate, fabricate some uh, pin portions to fit in there to make them look like they are attached together so that is that's what's up so I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do. I may try cutting off the uh, hollow guide horn, the hollow guide horns off of there and put on here just because I like the fact they have the locating pins and they'll give a nice firm connection and then I can put them together and it's only three so it shouldn't be that difficult. So and I think that would be easier than cutting little pieces of sprue and putting in between but I'll monkey around with it and see but that's just one thing that you know it's kind of I don't know kind of lame but it's not something that can't be overcome so anyway that's how far I am now since I need to get busy and start painting some of this stuff um, I had to make a decision and that is to start working on the magic tracks okay and I'm working on the left hand side magic tracks right now and um, you know so far so good as you can see I've got a piece of tape right here and what I did is I measured um, the distance from center wheel to center wheel to give me a base point to get started and it was like uh, I think it was a hundred millimeters yeah hundred millimeters so I basically laid it out I got one track here to serve as a kind of a support for this first one and I didn't I didn't glue that one and I just <coughs> excuse me assembled some of them glued them together with uh, to me extra thin assembled some more and got my uh, 100 um, millimeter length of uh, track now obviously this is the wrong side because it's the right side but just wanted to see what it looks like now from there I'll do the other side as well and then I will begin working on the top part of the track um, I'll glue I'll start cementing some together and then I'll begin draping them with just a slight amount of sag not over rambunctious but some slight amount of sag and uh, get those shaped up and then ultimately what I would like to do is have either two pieces or one piece that I can take off that way I can paint this and paint the track separately so as I progress I will keep uh, you guys updated with my uh, success or lack thereof so anyway that's where I am with the group slash buddy build with the um, Dragon SDKFZ 167 mid production Stug 4 so I'll call it quits there get some more work done and I will come back at a later date with the next update on this particular kit. So as always, thanks for watching Plastic Models by Regular Dude. And I will see you all next time.